Hello guys. Today in this video, I am going to discuss about the data link layer in internet. The internet consists of individual hosts, routers and the communication infrastructure that interconnects them. Within a single building, LANs are widely used for interconnection, but most of the wide area infrastructure is built up from point-to-point -point leased lines. In practice, point-to-point -point communication is used in two situations. First, thousands of organizations have one or more LANs, each with some number of hosts along with a router. The routers are interconnected by a backbone LAN. Typically, all connections to the outside world go through one or two routers that have point-to-point -point leased lines to distant routers. The second situation in which the point-to-point -point lines play a major role in the internet is the millions of individuals who have home connections to the internet using modems and dial-up telephone lines. Usually, what happens is that the user's home PC calls up an internet service provider router and then adds like a full-blown internet host. This method of operation is no different from having a list line between the PC and the router, except that the connection is terminated when the user ends the session. A home PC calling an internet service provider is shown in the figure. The modem is shown external to the computer to emphasize its role but modern computers have internal modems. The both the router router leased line connection and the dial up host router connection, some point to point data link layer protocol is required on the line for framing, error control, and other data link layer functionalities. The one used protocol in the internet is called point to point protocol. Let us discuss point-to-point -point protocol. The internet needs a point-to-point -point protocol for a variety of purposes, including router-to-router -router traffic and home user-to ISP traffic. PPP handles error detection, supports multiple protocols, allows IP addresses to be negotiated at the connection time, permits authentication, and has many other features. The PPP provides three important features and that are a frame method that the frame format also handles error detection. And second is a link control protocol for bringing lines up, testing them, negotiating options, and bringing them down again gracefully when they are no longer needed. This protocol is called LCP, that is link control protocol. It supports synchronous and asynchronous circuits and byte oriented as well as bit oriented encodings. A way to negotiate network layer options in a way that is independent of the network layer protocol to be used. The method chosen is to have a different NCP that is network control protocol for each network layer supported. To see how these pieces fit together, let us consider a typical scenario of a home user calling up an internet service provider to make a home PC as a temporary internet host. The PC first calls a provider's router via a modem. After the router's modem has answered the phone and established a physical connection, the PC sends the router a series of LCP packets in the payload field of one or more PPP frames. These packets and their responses select the PPP parameters to be used. Once the parameters have been agreed upon, a series of NCP packets are sent to configure the network layer. At this point, the PC is now an internet host and can send and receive IP packets just as hardwired host can. With the user is finished, NCP tears down the network layer connection and frees up the IP address. Then LCP sets down the data link layer connection. Finally, the computer tells the modem to hang up the phone, releasing the physical layer connection. The PPP frame format was chosen to closely resemble the HDLC frame format. 
The major difference between PPP and HDLC is that PPP is character oriented rather than bit oriented. In particular, PPP uses byte stepping on dial up modem lines. So all frames are an integral number of bytes. Not only the PPP frames be sent over dial up telephone lines, but they also send over sonnet or true bit oriented HDLC lines. The PPP frame format is shown in the figure. All PPP frames begins with a standard HDLC flag byte that is 0, 6 continuous ones, and 0, which is byte stuffed if it occurs within the payload field. Next occurs the address field, which is always set to the binary value all ones to indicate that all stations are to accept the frame. The address field is followed by the control field, the default value of which is 6 continuous zeros and 1 1. This value indicates an unnumbered frame. In other words, PPP does not provide reliable transmission using sequence numbers and acknowledgements as the default. In noisy environments, such as wireless networks, reliable transmission using numbered mode can be used. Since the address and control fields are always constant in the default configuration, LCP provides the necessary mechanism for the two parties to negotiate on options to just omit them altogether and save two bytes per frame. The fourth PPP field is the protocol field. Its job is to tell what kind of packet is in the payload field. Codes are defined for LCP, NCP, IP, IPX, Apple Talk, and other protocols. The protocols starting with 0 bit are network layer protocols such as IP, IPX, OSI, CLNP, XNS, etc. The protocols starting with bit 1 are used to negotiate other protocols. These include CLP and different NCP for each network layer protocol supported. The default size of the protocol field is 2 bytes, but it can be negotiated down to 1 byte using LCP. The payload field is variable length up to some negotiated maximum. If the length is not negotiated using LCP during the line setup page, the default length is 1500 bytes. After the payload field becomes uh, payload field, there is another field called as checksum field, which is normally two bytes, but four byte checksum can be negotiated. In summary, PPP is a multi protocol framing mechanism suitable for use over modems, HDLC, bit serial lines, SONET, and other physical layers. It supports error detection, option negotiation, header compression, and reliable transmission using HDLC type frame formats. Let us now see how are the way lines are brought up and down. The simplified diagram is shown in the figure. Figure shows the pages that a line goes through when our line goes through when it is brought up, used and taken down again. The sequence applies both to modem connections and router to router connections. The protocol starts with the line in the dead state, which means that no physical layer connection is present and no physical layer connection exists. After physical connection is established, the line moves to establish. At the point or at this point, CLP or not CLP, LCP option negotiation begins. If it is successful, leads to authenticate. Now the two parties can check on each other's identities if desired. When the network phase is entered, uh, the appropriate NCP protocol is invoked to configure the network layer. If the configuration is successful, open is reached and the data transport can take place. When data transport is finished, the line moves into the terminate phase. And from there back to dead, when the carrier is dropped. The 11 types of LCP frames are defined. They are shown in the table. Here, I stands for initiator, R stands for responder that accepts or rejects the frame. 
The first frame is configure request frame. That frame is transmitted from initiator to the responder. This frame is used for listing or list of proposed options and values. Then next frame is configure acknowledgement. This frame moves from responder to initiator. This frame tells all options are accepted. The next frame is configure negative acknowledgement that is NAK frame moves from responder to initiator telling some options are not accepted. The next frame is configure reject moves from responder to initiator tells that some options are not negotiable. The next frame is terminate request moves from initiator to responder. This frame request to shut the line down. The next frame is terminate acknowledgement moves from responder to the initiator and tells OK line shut down. Next frame is code reject moves from responder to initiator tells that unknown request received. Next frame is protocol reject moves from responder to initiator tells unknown protocol requested. Then echo request moves from initiator to responder. It is used to request like please send this frame back. Then echo reply moves from responder to initiator. Meaning is here is the frame back. The last frame is discard request moves from initiator to the responder. Just discard this frame, it is used for testing purpose. The options that can be negotiated includes setting the maximum payload size for data frames, enabling authentication and closing or choosing a protocol to use, enabling line quality monitoring during normal operation and it also includes selecting various header compression options. So this is about point to point protocol. Thank you.